If you've ever gotten a steak that was a little more done than you want it to be, then you know the disappointment that comes from not getting internal temperatures just right. Now, it's a hard fact that thermodynamics is the most important factor in cooking your steak the way you want it to be, but thermodynamics is an incredibly complex science. It's an advanced course at the university. But if you didn't take that course, that's okay. Today, we're going to talk about the thermodynamic variables you need to control to get the steak results that you want. We've got thick, medium, and thin ribeyes, and we're gonna see how they react differently to the same cooking method. We did a reverse sear on all three steaks, starting with indirect heat in the gas grill at 250 degrees. Based on our research, we pulled the thin steak from indirect heat at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the middle thick steak from heat at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the thick steak at 115. We didn't want the steak temps to still be rising when we put them on the grill for the sear, so we let that carry over from the indirect cook run its course before we continued. RFX was feeding us temperature info, and we watched the app to see the temperature climb, slow, stop, and even change direction before we carried on with the sear. The thin steak had about two degrees of carryover, the middle steak had about five degrees, and the thick steak had a whole 10 degrees of carryover cooking. And those carryovers took drastically different amounts of time, from eight to 20 minutes to complete. Why? Why did the steaks behave so differently? The answer is thermal mass. Thermal mass determines the amount of thermal momentum a piece of meat will have. Think of a freight train versus a compact car. It doesn't take a lot of energy or force to get that compact car going. You can push it yourself down the road some distance, but it takes a lot to get the train moving. Likewise, once the train is moving, it takes some real distance to stop it, whereas the car can stop in only a couple dozen yards. So the thin steak reacted very quickly to the temperature in the grill and started its climb almost immediately, but the thick steak took several minutes to even register a temperature change in the center of the meat. The exact same thing happened when we took them out of the heat. The small car steak stopped cooking right away and the freight train steak slowed down over the course of 20 minutes. After the initial cook and the carryover, it was time for us to sear. We seared each steak for three minutes total flipping every 30 seconds on a 550 degree grill, and we got some very interesting results. The sear on the thin steak was okay. The sear on the thickest steak was fantastic. Why? The thin steak had only a few minutes in indirect heat, while the thicker steak had more time to dry the surface in the moderate heat of the grill. When we seared it, the heat could go right to the Maillard reactions on the thick steak, without having to cook off a bunch of surface water first. But an even more surprising result came from the cooking that happened in the steak during that three minute sear. Think of the heat available per ounce of meat. That ratio has real world effects. Let's go back to our vehicle analogy for a second. If we attach, say, a rocket to the back of a Corolla and we let it run for three minutes, that Corolla is going to cover a lot of ground. But if we attach that same rocket to a freight train and burn it for the same amount of time, it's not gonna go nearly as far. That's what happened with the internal temperatures on our sear. And that's why we pulled the steaks from indirect heat at such varied temperatures. Based on our trials, you can expect to see about 30 degrees Fahrenheit of carryover plus cooking during a three minute sear like this one on steaks that are a little less than an inch thick about 25 degrees of carryover plus cooking for an inch and a half thick steaks, and about 10 degrees for steaks that are about two inches thick. Using those numbers, you can plan when to remove your steaks from the indirect heat so you can end up exactly where you want with your steaks. Let's take a look at how the cooking actually turned out on these three steaks. Now, a big piece of meat like this is really kind of a luxury. That's a holiday piece of meat. Most of us are cooking every day down here in this end where the sear is even more critical and more likely to ruin your steak. That's why high-end temperature tools are super important. RFX can be on the grill, taking that heat and telling you what's happening in your steak the whole time. Now, these steaks have cooled while we've been filming, so we're just going to be looking at the doneness of the steaks when we cut these open. Our thinnest one first. And you can see that's beautiful. We ended up at 133.3 degrees on this steak, and it shows that's perfect medium rare all the way through on this thin steak. Now moving on to the, our medium thickness steak. This is also, there's very little gray band here on the edge. This is a beautiful doneness. And now moving on to our thick cut bone in ribeye. That's just beautiful. 
You can see the marbleization in there. Very faint gray band and beautiful colored meat all the way across. Perfect steaks like this, regardless of thickness, is why you should use high accuracy temperature tools. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy cooking.